Okay. And uh, I just want to introduce Brooke. Brooke Stroder is an emerging diviner with a focus on traditional Western astrology mm -hmm. and tarot. Um, she was introduced to astrology as a child and she began to deepen her astrological knowledge in 2016. Her study of tarot started in 2019. And she's been, no, and by practicing divination, she seeks to help, help others identify the strengths and challenges they might experience and channel that energy into ways that lead to improved intuition and decision making. So welcome, Brooke. Thank you very much. And the floor is all yours. All right. Thank you, Bria. And thank you, everyone, for coming to this class today. It's part two of our divination series. And so today we're going to be learning uh, the basics of astrology. And so we're going to learn about zodiac signs, uh, the meanings of the different planets, and how they represent and relate to you. And so I guess one thing I just want to like make very clear beforehand is like, I am not an expert astrologer. I work at the library. I just have like a really deep and passionate interest in astrology. And when I did enough like opportunity to like teach a class, it's just like the first thing that came to my mind. And so, yeah, I'm constantly learning about astrology. I've been learning since I was five because my mom was into astrology too. And so, yes, yeah, I'm just a very interested person into astrology. I'm not like the expert by any means. So what is astrology? Uh, according to Encyclopedia Britannica, astrology is divination that consists of interpreting the influence of stars and planets on earthly affairs and human destinies. And so it's just saying that the stars and the planets, they have an impact on how we interact with our environment and it has effect on our personality, uh, our goals and things like that. Nature. So when was astrology first discovered? So it was discovered in 3000 BCE in Mesopotamia, which would be current day Iraq. And so it was loosely related to their religious beliefs. And so they attributed the movement of the planets to their like religious figures. And astrology is something that's used around the world, including ancient China, Egypt, and India. They all have their own systems and practices. Uh, so if you're familiar with like the Chinese zodiac, they have different symbols or uh, figures that they attribute uh, astrology to, kind of like the year of the ox, year of the rat. That's not the same system that we use, but each kind of like country or community use their own form of astrology. But the astrology we're talking about today is traditional Western astrology. And so traditional astrology uh, originated between 323 BC and 31 BC in ancient Greece during the Hellenistic period. And so they attributed the movement of the planets to uh, Greek mythology. So a lot of the planets and the zodiac signs and constellations, they're related to Greek titans, Olympian gods, and Greek myths. And then the way that they calculate astrology. So they would look in the sky, they'd see a planet, and they would see which constellation it was located in. And so if you saw the constellation of Aries, and you notice the sun is in that constellation at the moment, they would say the sun is in Aries. Or if you notice Mercury is in the constellation of Gemini, you would say Mercury is in Gemini. And then they named the constellations after different Greek figures, and then they attributed those traits from the myth to the constellation and then the zodiac sign. So how can I use astrology? So there are so many different ways that people use astrology in their personal lives. So these are just a few. So some people use it to analyze world events through mundane astrology. Some people study financial trends and financial astrology. Some people use medical astrology to discover what ailments they may be 
predisposed to and what treatments could work best for them. And some people, a lot of people actually use like synastry, which is studying the compatibility of multiple people because a lot of people want to know like what relationships are gonna work and not work. But again, the astrology that we're gonna be talking about today is natal astrology. So it's the study of how the stars were aligned when we're born. So like every day, the planet shifts a little. And so you're, when you're born, it's like taking a snapshot of the sky and you're looking at where each planet is at the time you were born. And it affects, and we believe it affects your personality, your strengths, your challenges you might experience and the goals that you want to achieve. And so with natal astrology, you're looking at each planet, you're looking at the relationships between the planets and how they affect different areas of your life. And so this is an example of what a birth chart looks like. And so on the outside ring, the 12 slices kind of represent the 12 different zodiac signs. And then the figures inside the slices, like this and like all of these, those represent different planets. And so we're just gonna focus on the symbols on the outside and the symbols on the inside. There's so much more that you can study, but again, this is an intro class. So we're just gonna focus on like the core components, which I believe to be planets and signs. And so the planets. And so with traditional astrology, people studied the planets that could be seen with the naked eye. And so they studied the sun, the moon, which aren't planets, but uh, for the purposes of astrology, they're celestial objects. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And then Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. They weren't discovered until the late 20th century, and you need a telescope to see them. And so traditional astrologers didn't know it existed, so they didn't contribute those planets into their astrological studies. And so modern astrologers, so astrologers who started studying the planets, including Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, they kind of attribute more meaning to what we call the outer planets, but with traditional astrologers, because they couldn't see those planets, they don't have as much of an impact. And so we're gonna be focusing on the first seven planets. So here is the sun. And so I'm gonna be talking about the significance of each planet in natal astrology in different forms of astrology. They might have slightly different meanings, but for natal astrology, these are kind of like the core significations. So the sun represents your overall essence and purpose. It, think about it, the sun is this giant <coughs> orb of fire that shines light on everything in its like atmosphere basically. And so the sun represents how you shine through the world and it's how others recognize and admire you. And so if someone were to give you a compliment, they're most likely talking about attributes to your sun sign. And then we have the moon. So the moon kind of represents your initial emotional response to conflict or challenges. Uh, the moon also represents how you make yourself feel safe, how you bring comfort into your life, how you practice self-care. And the moon also reflects your habits and instincts. And so if the sun is kind of representing who you are amongst the world, interacting with people, the moon kind of represents your internal self, who you are when you're alone and you're not affected by other people. And then we have Mercury. So Mercury rules your communication style. It's how you express yourself and how you like communicate with other people. It's how we learn and process information. 
and it's also about travel and transportation. Mercury is the planet closest to the sun, and it has the fastest orbit around the sun, and so it's associated with like speed and quickness. And then we have Venus. So Venus uh, rules over how we connect with others, how we form relationships, and not just romantic relationships, any connection with another person. It also rules over aesthetic and style. So some of your fashion preferences can be found by looking at your Venus placement. And it also rules over money and personal values. And then we have the planet Mars. This is how we exert energy. And so if the sun kind of like represents like your goals and what you want to pursue, Mars represents how you're going to pursue it, the energy that you put into pursuing your goals. It represents your motivation and your drive, and it also represents competition and conflict. Mars is related to the god of war, and so Mars just has a lot of kind of like hostile, tense energy that has to be released. And then we have Jupiter, which is the biggest planet in our solar system. It represents expansion and growth, which is related to the size of the planet. It also represents luck, abundance, and like good fortune. Just like by looking at your Jupiter sign, you can kind of see like what good things kind of like are more likely to occur in your life. And it also represents ethics and morals. Jupiter is related with philosophy and kind of answering the big questions. And so you kind of can look at how you develop your personal moral code through your Jupiter placement. And then we have Saturn. So this is associated with authority, with boundaries and structures, which is related to the rings that protect Saturn. And it's also related with time and maturity. And then one thing that's important to clarify, the way that planets receive these significations. So again, they were named after Greek Titans. And so they take the attributes of the Greek Titan they're named after and apply them to the planet. But you also just looking at the planet and seeing its physical attributes, they kind of pull more personal or personality related traits to apply them to people. So those are all of the planets that can be seen with the naked eye. And then we have the outer planets. So on your chart, Uranus would represent change and freedom. Neptune would represent illusions and idealism. And Pluto would represent destruction and rebirth. So. I think one good way to kind of look at the planets and understand them is by looking at the scale of size. So the sun is so big, you can't even capture the majority of it uh, in a picture in comparison to other planets. But then you have Mercury. Yeah, you have the moon. I don't know. Yeah, so these are the planets, and then that's Uranus, Neptune, Pluto at the end. As you can see, Jupiter and Saturn are like huge compared to, compared to some of the smaller planets right here. And then we have Earth. We don't, in astrology, we don't really refer to Earth because we're the one who, it's our viewpoint that we're looking at the stars, so there's no like signification related with Earth. But it's an interesting thing to think about. So uh, did anyone have any questions about the planets or their meaning? Well, you're probably going to get to this. And they, they, after thousands of years of studying and predicting and then comparing, was this guy right or wrong? And who, who has, the, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming there's some sort of um, process that went through, well, this seems to have held true 
so many times over the past. And what whatever the predictions were to come up with those categories like your change, freedom, mm -hmm. value, what, all these different influences. And I, what I what I'm wondering, you know, with these these planets, and the fact, I mean, it really was a, for me thinking that Earth didn't have any kind of thing because it's our perspective on them. Um, when they're placed, you know, their position in relationship, is it their position only in relationship to the sun, the star that all they, they all go around, or is it their position within one another? That would, because I can't, I can't, you know, just all by itself, it can't control anything. It has to have some relationship, whether it's people on Earth, that planet, or other planets. Yeah. So is that is that like where I'm thinking like possibly that is going to, you're going to yeah. talk well, about it? Okay. Let me go back to the example of a birth chart here. Okay. And so if we think about this as the sky, it's a circle because everything kind of like relates and can like bounce off of one another. And so for example, so this right here in this like eighth slice, that I'm this sorry, Brooke, Brooke, I'm sorry. Yeah. When you say this, you have to kind of explain yeah. where this means because we can't okay. see your hand. So if we're looking at the circle, you see numbers on the inside of each slice. And so the slice that has the number eight on the inside, that symbol inside of that slice that's the like sun. And so is, is the sun in the center of that circle? Mm -mm. No. Okay. So where the eight is, your eyes are going to keep going to the right. So if you're in the room, it's the circle right, right here. Okay. Is that the sun there? Yes. And then next to it up in slice nine is the moon. Yes. And then another slice has a bunch of stuff. A lot of planets are sitting there at this point. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, each symbol in each slice correlates to a different planet or asteroids, which we're not going to get into today, but it represents like a celestial object. And so they are all in relationship with one another. And so it's not just about the planet's relationship to the sun that we're analyzing. We're analyzing each planet independently, but also the relationships they have to one another. Okay. And so by which planets they interact with, it can affect the expression of that planet in your chart. Does that kind of like help answer your question? Well, there, there is some sort of dependency among all of those together. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm feeling sorry for some of those signs have no planets in them. <laughs> Three blanks. <laughs> so does that mean anything or? No. Okay. So it's a little bit more of a advanced concept for this particular class. Okay. But yeah, well, beginning. even the empty slices represent an area of our life. So they all have meaning and they all relate to the individual. Makes sense. So, were there any questions in the chat? Nope. Okay, great. So those were all of the planets. And the best way to think about planets and talking about astrology, they're kind of like characters in a play. So they represent the different aspects of our personality and ourself. So there's like your like social self, there's your emotional self, there's like yourself when you're ready to act, there's yourself when you're ready to connect with others. Each planet kind of correlates to a different part of yourself. A way I compare it to, if anyone's seen Inside Out, you know how there are the different emotions like joy, sadness, fear, anger, disgust, they're all kind of like separate entities, but they all are a part of the main character. Astrology, the planets kind of represent those different qualities. And so you have the planets and then we have the zodiac signs. So there are 12 zodiac signs studied in Western astrology. 
and they're all based off the constellations that are in that the sun and planets kind of like move around. So zodiac signs are often categorized by the ruling planet, their elements and modality. And similar to the planets, each sign is related to a Greek myth. So we just went over the planets. We also described zodiac signs ruling the elements, which are the four aspects of life that, or of the earth that create life. So you have fire, earth, air, and water. So in astrology, fire energy kind of correlates with being very like eager and determined to pursue your goals. Earth energy in astrology is related to being pragmatic and perceptive, having to really experience things to make a judgment. Air energy in astrology is associated with being social and cerebral. And then water energy in astrology is related to being compassionate and intuitive. And then with modalities, they kind of represent like the three sections of like pursuing a goal. I kind of associate it with the seasons. And so at the beginning of the season, uh, you get this new energy. It's a complete like switch. And it's just like a new energy for that describes that season. Then you have fixed energy, which is kind of like that energy being sustained and being maintained. So it's not changing a whole lot. And then you have, it says mutual, it should be mutable, but mutable energy, it's kind of like the end of the season where things are like a little funky because things are starting to change, but it's not the start of the new season yet. And so talking about zodiac signs, we take the planet, the element, and the modality, and those are a really good way to describe zodiac signs. So the first zodiac sign is Aries. And so the date next to each sign is related to when the sun is in this constellation. So typically, the sun is in Aries from March 21st to April 20th. And so Aries is ruled by Mars. It is the cardinal modality and it is a fire, an element of fire. And Aries is symbol is the ram. So it's someone who is very headstrong. So Aries are often described as being very active. That fire energy, that cardinal energy, they're just ready to go. Any spark that they feel, they have to like pursue it with full energy. Since they're ruled by Mars, Aries are known for being very brave and competitive. They kind of just go for things. They're willing to take the risk in order to achieve their goal. And then they're also known to be impulsive, kind of like a spark. Sometimes they pop up without actively trying for them. And because they have that energy that just requires them to like start and move forward, they kind of act before they think sometimes. And so that's where we get the impulsive like symbolism of Aries. And then the next sign in astrology is Taurus. So typically the sun is in Taurus between April 21st and May 21st. It is ruled by Venus and it is a fixed earth sign represented by the bull. And so Tauruses are known for being enduring. They will take as long as they need to to accomplish a goal. It's the fixed energy of wanting to maintain and not change too much. And then earth, which is about building like physical structures and building and achieving like goals. So that's where you get enduring from. Sensual in the truest sense of the word, Venus rules pleasure. And so in order to experience things, they have to sense things. So they're known for being, Tauruses are known for being indulgent, 
because they have to taste food, enjoy tasting food to see what tastes good so that they can keep having it. Or with Venus is also related to beauty and art. They have to see the art in order to make a judgment of what is beautiful so that they can keep bringing it into their life. They are also known for being possessive. Again, if you have fixed energy, which is about maintaining, and you have Venus, which rules connections with others, they want to maintain connections. So sometimes they hold on to things very tightly in order to keep them in their life. And in a similar vein, they're also very loyal. They don't like change. You don't like switching things up. They're very much about maintaining relationships. And so as long as you don't do anything to stop them from pursuing their goals, they will be very loyal. And then we have Gemini. We have, the sun is currently in Gemini right now. Gemini is, the sun is in Gemini typically from May 22nd to June 21st. Gemini is ruled by Mercury and it is mutable air and which kind of think of like wind and they're symbolized by the twins. So Gemini's are known for dual energy. So they are known as twins. You have two different personalities, but you're usually dealing with just one person. And so Gemini's kind of represent that dual energy of having different needs that need to be fulfilled at different times. They are also known for being very playful. Mercury, the Greek myth, is often related to someone who's very playful. They just like gathering information, connecting with others to obtain more information, and they keep things very lighthearted because they're always on the move. They're also known for being flighty for the same reason. Mercury just moves super fast. They don't need to stick around. Once they learned what they wanted to learn, they're gonna move on to learn something new. And they're very curious. They love obtaining information, Mercury is known as when communication, they just kind of like want more and more and more knowledge. There really is no end in sight. And so Geminis are just known for constantly pursuing new things, new people, new hobbies, because why not? And then you have Cancer. And when the sun is in Cancer, it's typically from June 22nd to July 22nd. Cancer is ruled by the moon. They are cardinal water and they are represented by the crab. So you think about the crab, they're super soft on the inside, but they have this very hard shell and they have these claws that can attack you. And so they are known for being very protective. Since they know that they're soft, they're very afraid of getting hurt. And so they're willing to build these walls up and to be very guarded so that they don't get hurt. They're also very understanding I feel like with the moon, the moon is very like, oh, like elusive. Things are kind of like hidden. Not everything's very clear of how things work on the moon. And so they're very understanding. They kind of understand that people have a lot of different emotional needs and kind of are all constantly changing. And so cancers are very understanding of those shifts in other people. They're very tenacious. I, with cardinal energy, cancers, they're ready to make moves. They're ready to make big decisions, but they're generally motivated by their emotions and they're in building emotional bonds with people, which is where the water comes in. So cardinal water, it's like moving forward in the pursuit of like emotional bonds. And they're very sentimental. They like holding on to things. They get very like attached to people when they do feel safe around them. And so that's what creates that like sentimental energy. And then we have Leo. The sun is in Leo between July 23rd and August 22nd. Leo is ruled by the sun. They are fixed fire and they are represented by the lion. So Leos are often described as being self-determined. They have really big goals. They're not afraid to pursue them. Think about the sun, it's this giant orb of fire that has to shine light on everyone. Leos, they tend to want to shine their light some type of way and make a really big impact. And so they're not afraid 
to put themselves out there to do so, which also makes them very bold. And then they're very reassuring. And so with anything that's fixed fire, think about to keep a fire alive, you have to constantly heat it so that it can support other people with heat and with flame. So with Leos, they like to give out that positive reassuring energy, but you also need to give it back to them so that they can, you know, keep feeling themselves. They can't give without like receiving, if that makes sense. It also makes them very generous. Think about the sun. There's no limit to how much the sun can provide for people. There's just always more that the sun, the light the sun can give. And so that also kind of like is related to Leo's. They just always have more to give. And so they really do make it a point to be generous with other people. And then Virgo, the sun goes through Virgo between August 23rd and September 22nd. Virgo is also ruled by Mercury. It's also a mutable sign, but they are also an earth sign. They're symbolized by the virgin or the maiden. Virgos are known for being very productive. Mercury likes to be very busy. So Virgos always have to be working on something in some way, shape, or form. They also cannot be bored, but because they are earth sign, their that constant energy is usually fueled towards a specific goal or task that they want to accomplish. They're also known for being very observant. They are humble. I feel like with earth energy, they're such a constant movement and they're always working towards a goal that they're not the biggest fans of praise because it doesn't help them pursue the goal in their perspective. They're also very analytical. They pick up on details and they're always trying to refine things edit things so that they can be, they can contribute to whatever group or team that they're a part of. And then we have Libra. So the sun goes through Libra anytime between September 23rd and October 22nd. Libra is also ruled by Venus. They are a cardinal air sign and they're ruled by the scales. So the scales are the or Libra is the only sign that has like a inanimate object as a symbol. And so scales are used to balance things. Libras are known for being very equitable. They like things to be fair. They don't like anyone to be slighted in any way, shape or form. So they're always trying to find a balance in relationships and in their decisions. They're, because they're ruled by Venus, they're very connection oriented. They like bonding with others. They like connecting with others. It kind of, like, it's what fuels them. It makes them feel good. Because they're trying to find that equity, that fairness, when there's not a clear decision that gives them that equity, they won't make a decision. It can make them a little bit indecisive. And then they're also known for being charming. In order to build connection, sometimes you have to, strategically make choices so that people will be drawn to you. And so that's where the Libra Charming Association comes from. And then we have Scorpio. The sun goes through Scorpio between October 23rd and November 21st. Scorpio is also ruled by Mars. They are a fixed water sign symbolized by the scorpion. Again, heart shell that has poison in their tail as a defense mechanism. Me mechanism. They are very private. They are very guarded. One thing about Mars, if Mars kind of like is associated with the god of war, war requires action, but it also requires strategy. And so Scorpios are known for being private and strategic because they want to make sure that they are keeping themselves safe at all times. And so they kind of like analyze their environment to make sure that they are aware of any possible threats that are coming their way. They're known for being self-composed. They don't wear their heart on their sleeve. They don't show their hands. They really are trying, again, to protect themselves 
keep themselves safe and they don't want anyone to see them sweat because if they sweat, you know, something's going wrong. They're also very attentive. Again, kind of like related with the same thing. To be knowledgeable of what's going on around you, you have to be very attentive. And I feel like with fixed water, you kind of think of like ice, but there's not a lot of like movement. And so that stillness kind of like allows them to take, they take advantage of it so that they can observe their environment. And then you have Sagittarius. The sun goes through Sagittarius between November 22nd and December 21st. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. They are a mutable fire sign. And they're represented by the archer. And most of the symbolism, Sagittariuses are centaurs. So they have the bottom half of a horse, upper body of a man with a bone era. Sagittariuses are known for being honest, that is associated with Jupiter constantly trying to find like the big picture. They're in Sagittarius, they find that by lying, it doesn't get them to their goal of like obtaining knowledge. And so they kind of just say things how it is. They are freedom seeking, the mutable energy, they're constantly moving around to find a place where they can be free and fully express themselves they can be contemplative. So if Jupiter rules over philosophy, Sagittarius says they're always trying to find the answers to the big questions. And sometimes they don't, they don't come quick. You kind of have to like sit and wait for things to happen, kind of like let your mind open up to new ideas and concepts. So they can be very contemplative, but they're always hopeful. Jupiter is associated with hope and faith and luck. And so even when they're in that period of like, waiting for the answer. They always have hope that they're gonna find it. And that really like pushes them to keep exploring, keep going on new adventures, things of that nature. And then we have Capricorn. The sun goes through Capricorn between December 22nd and January 19th. They're ruled by Saturn, they're a cardinal earth sign, and they are symbolized by a goat. I actually just saw a video of a goat they were defying the laws of physics, going up a mountain like completely sideways in order to reach the mountaintop. And I feel like that's a really good analogy. Capricorns, they're very self-sufficient. If you know anything about Saturn is related to the Greek Titan Kronos, and if you know anything about that Greek myth, they people had the children of Kronos had to fend for themselves. And so if Capricorns are very self-sufficient. They don't like relying on other people to achieve their goals. They're gonna find a way to do it themselves because they're earth sign, they move with purpose. Cardinal earth, they are making big decisions to achieve those goals. So they always move with purpose. And when they achieve those goals, they're very dignified. They hold their head up high. They're very like proud of themselves for accomplishing what they needed to. And they are diligent. They're defined as being hard workers and constantly sacrificing like pleasure seeking activities in order to keep working towards the bigger goals that they have. And then we have Aquarius. The sun goes through Aquarius between January 20th and February 18th. They are also ruled by Saturn and they are fixed air. They are known as the water bearer they're associated with being unconventional. I feel like with Aquarius being air, they're constantly thinking of new ideas, new concepts, new ways to interact. And Saturn, it rules structures. So Aquariuses are always thinking of new structures that can work, new social rules that can be followed. And so they question the status quo. They usually don't like it. They're known for being detached since they're very community oriented. And so with Aquariuses, sometimes they're so focused on the bigger picture of how to make a stronger community that sometimes the more interpersonal relationships that they have can kind of fall to the wayside. They are very idealistic. With fixed energy, they like maintaining. With air, 
they like maintaining their new ideas. And so they can be very attached to the ideas that they have in order to create a better society. And they're very community oriented. They like helping others. They're willing to kind of like step into the background if they believe that's the best way for people to like improve or for society to improve. And then the last sign we have Pisces. The sun goes through Pisces between February 19th and March 20th. Pisces is also ruled by Jupiter. There's a mutable water sign. And they're symbolized by the fish. If anyone has ever tried to catch a fish with their hands, they know it is pretty much impossible. Pisces are known for being very elusive. Because they're mutable, they're constantly moving. They're hard to catch. They don't want to be catched. They're kind of like to evade being like restrained in any way. They're also pretty sensitive. They take on so much like energy in the water. If you think about how big the ocean is, it's like endless. We've only discovered like 10% of what's in the ocean. They are so kind of like aware of what's going on in their environment. They can be a little bit overwhelming, so they can be a bit sensitive to it. But again, it makes them very understanding of other people and the struggles that they go through. They are imaginative, being ruled by Jupiter. They have really big ideas. They, again, want to explore. They want to see what the world has to offer. And so they kind of imagine all of the new places that they can see. And they're also known for being very devoted. With Jupiter, is associated with faith. Once they believe in something, they will be very dedicated and devoted to it. And so, yeah. So those are the 12 zodiac signs. Did anyone have questions about those 12 signs? Anyone? Okay. So you might be like, okay, what this is, how can I relate what I know about the planets with what I know about the signs? So I'll kind of explain how you um, synthesize it together. So let's take the moon. So the moon, it represents your emotional self. It represents like your habits and your instincts and how you feel safe. So if the moon is in Libra, how would this relate to you? If you, what does this energy look like? Libra, they're connection oriented. They really value personal relationships and they really believe in achieving balance and equity in their lives. So if someone has a Libra moon, they feel safe when they feel like all, all of their personal relationships are in a good place. They feel like everyone's kind of getting their fair share. No one is being treated better than the other, no one's feeling bad. That's what makes them feel good. And so if there's any emotional conflict and there's any kind of like disruption to those relationships, someone with a Libra moon, they will want to make the decision that will repair the relationship. Even if it's a decision that's not in their own personal best interest. So we compare that to someone who has their moon in Scorpio. So Scorpio, they're much more private. They're a little bit more defensive. So what makes them feel safe? What makes them feel safe when they know that they have some things to themselves, when they don't feel exposed to other people. And so for them, emotional conflict might come when they feel like someone is like trying to like take them out. They feel like there's kind of like a predator after them. They're feeling like there's more attention and energy on them than they would like. And so then how they make themselves feel safe they might try to defend themselves to achieve, find a strategy to make themselves feel safe, even if that puts someone else, like someone might get like, you know, a little, hurt a little. They are very much motivated by keeping themselves safe and keeping them private. So, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be confused. Yeah. But, um, the moon exists one celestial body. Yeah. Can that moon be only in one sign? So, or can it be in multiple signs, like crossing over? Mm -hmm. And how the moon can it be in all signs? Yeah. 
So and how is that? Is it in relationship to your birthday? Yeah. So, so it is in relation to a birthday, not like today, the moon and all the planets, the way they're aligned, it's a certain configuration. It's how your sign reacts to all of the configurations. Yeah. So each planet has a cycle where they go through all of the different signs. And so for the moon, the moon goes through every sign in 28 days. So every two and a half days, the moon changes signs. So it changes which constellation it would appear in. And so if you were born on June 1st, you would have, like today, you'd have like a cancer moon. If you're born on June 5th, you wouldn't have a cancer moon. You might have a Leo moon or a Virgo moon because the moon moves that quickly. Mercury has its own cycle. I want to say it's like every two and a half, three weeks. And so it goes through every sign in like three weeks. So every few days, it's also changing. So, okay. So today, everybody has their moon in a particular sign, right? So but my my sign, based on my date of birth, yeah. if there's some sort of correlation, when the moon is in Libra, my Sagittarius sign it's going to have a different kind of reaction, <laughs> not reaction, but yeah. a different casting or yeah. my so, personality traits might yeah. change. So let me show you guys how to find your birth chart so you can find what sign each planet was in when you were born. So for beginners, I recommend the website cafeastrology.com. Oh, that name. <laughs> and so... The coffee when you... Go to that website. Yeah, so I'm going to show you guys on the screen how to find your chart. Just one moment. So here is Cafe Astrology. So you let me share my screen. Okay, so this is cafeastrology.com. And so what you're gonna do, you're gonna scroll down to where it says, how to obtain my birth chart. You're gonna click on that. You're going to scroll down to where it says, our free natal chart service. So you're gonna click on that. And then you're gonna click create a new chart. Then you're going to put in your name. I'll use um, today's class as an example. We're gonna do June 1st, 2022. Ooh, somebody born today. And then, but obviously, if you're looking at your own chart, you're going to put in your own birthday. Mm -hmm. If you know your birth time, put in your birth time. If you do not know your what time you were born, click on unknown time. So for the intentions of just showing the most basic chart, you will, I'm going to do unknown time. And then you're going to type where you were born. So this class is in Evanston. So we're going to click on Evanston. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to hit submit. Then you're going to scroll down to see your table chart. I recommend the table chart because I think it's more important to focus on just the planet and the sign they're in. Uh, I think it's just the easiest way to learn. That's how I learned. And then as you can see at this snapshot in time, the sun is in Gemini today. The moon is in Cancer. Mercury is in Taurus, so on, so forth. If we were to do this chart, let's say on July 1st, it will look very different because all of the planets are constantly moving. And so, in this chart, it would represent where each 
planet was at the time that you were born, or on the day that you were born. If you know your birth time, that's much better because astrology is a very time specific um, practice. And so you would want to be as specific as possible, putting in your information. And then if you want to create the circle chart that I showed you guys earlier, I'll show you how to do it on astro.com. Now there's gonna be a lot more um, information. So it might be a little overwhelming. So again, I recommend cafe astrology if you just want the basic planet in sign for when you were born. But if you're interested in the circle chart, I'll show you how to do it. So again, oh, sorry. You're gonna go to three horoscopes. You're gonna go to horoscope drawings and data. And you're gonna go to extended chart selection. And then I already put in information earlier today, but it would ask you to like add data entry. And then you're just gonna put in your name, gender, birthday, and for this one, I'm gonna do the time because the class started at 6.30. I'm gonna do Evanston. It's a perfect time to do a chart when the baby's born. <laughs> <laughs> and then because you are practicing traditional astrology today, you're going to want to go to where it says house system. You're going to want to click on full signs. You don't want to do default. You're going to want to do whole signs because traditional astrologers use whole signs. Excuse me, is that whole W-H-O-L-E? Yes. Okay. And then you're going to click, click here to show the chart. So this is what a circle chart for our class looks like. And so in the slides, I have um, I have a pictures that represent what each symbol represents and what each sign is as like a symbol. But this is like the snapshot of you personally, mm -hmm. of where the planets were when you were born. And so then you would look, so this little, Crescent is the moon. This symbol right here where the cursor is, that is that represents cancer. Mm -hmm. So this person or this class, it has the moon in cancer. And so if this were a person, if someone had their moon in cancer, what's their emotional response to things? You think about cancer energy. They're sensitive to things. They like holding on to things. They are, their emotions are constantly moving and they are sentimental. They like holding on to things. So if there's something that they really care about, they will hold on to it. And so when you're looking at your own chart, you're gonna look at the planet. You're gonna think about what does that planet represent? And then you're gonna look at what sign it's in. And then you're going to take the attributes related to that sign and then you're gonna like morph them together. And then that's how you kind of derive meaning in your own life. So let me go back to the presentation. And so these are the symbols for your planets. You have like, this is from NASA. So they have a symbol for Earth. Astrology, we don't use that. So this is the sun, Mercury, Venus, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, then Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. So you would look for these symbols in your chart, and then you would take the meaning of those planets, and you'd be like, okay, this is the part of my personality that I want to learn more about. And then you're going to look at the outside circle, are you gonna look at the chart to see what sign is next to the planet? So these are the different symbols for each sign. And then you take the attributes of that sign and then you relate it to the planet. So for example, 
let's say you have someone who has their Mars in, let's say, Virgo. So that person, they're going to constantly be on the move. They're always going to try to make themselves busy. They're always going to be like actively working towards a goal. They're going to be very detail oriented while working on that goal. And they're going to be very analytic, analytical while achieving whatever goal they have. And because Virgo is ruled by Mercury, if they are in a situation of competition or conflict, they are going to use like their verbal, they're going to communicate uh, verbally usually or through writing or whatever communication tool in order to convey their argument. And so you kind of just do that with each planet. It's like you just pull the symbol, you look at what sign it's in, and then you just morph kind of like those two uh, signific significations together. And that's kind of like how you start uh, understanding your birth chart. And again, you're going to want to look at your chart. So you, every person has like, everyone has every planet in their chart, but the planet isn't gonna move because it's a snapshot. So the chart that you were born with is the chart you're gonna have for the rest of your life. So like in this chart, this is a moon in Cancer. Your moon is not going to move. Your moon will always be in Cancer for your entire life. Or your sun is always going to be in Gemini. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna change into another sign. You will always be born on your birthday. And so those planets will never change. And so oh, it's uh, 729. Okay, I just have one more slide about books I recommend. And so we've got a couple on the table here. Yeah. So the book I recommend for everyone is Astrology Using the Wisdom of the Stars in Everyday Life. So it's this book right here. I'll show it. Sorry, let me stop sharing. It's this book right here by Carol Taylor. It is the book I use to like understand everything. It goes in the planets, the signs. If you're really interested, you can learn about the, like everything about a birth chart, the relationships between planets, all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we have the astrology of you and me by Gary Goldschneider. So it doesn't go into depth about the planets, but it goes into very heavy detail about the energy of each sign and the different environments that um, the energy of each zodiac sign can be like manifested in. So at work, a coworker versus a boss versus like a competitor or like your friends versus like your mom versus your sibling, things like that. And then this is actually a library book. This is You Were Born for This by Chani Nichols or by Chani Nicholas. This book is really good for learning about your sun sign, your moon sign. You didn't get into this, but your rising sign. I just realized this is backwards. But yeah, I, um, I was trying to figure out um, if you if you had yeah somebody else is controlling the yeah yeah. But I have a list in the presentation as well. Let me share my screen. Yeah. So. If Maybe sure. I can share that whenever I send the email out, I can share the uh, list. Or yeah, could you send it to me? And so, right. yeah. Right. And then the last book, and it's actually two, but I have one of them with me. It's Astrology for Happiness and Wellness by Mecca Woods. And I will shout Mecca out specifically because I've had an astrology reading with her. She's awesome. She's also a Black woman astrologer, which is like not as common as in most fields. Did so, she live here in Illinois? Mm -mm. I did it virtually. She was in New York. Yeah, okay. 
but for astrology of happiness and success it's about personal and like the, the ways that you can use astrology to like bring more positivity into your life which I think is very important and it's like one of the main reasons why I studied astrology and so if you're in person you can check these out after and <laughs> yeah but these okay. are the books and then, yeah. right. I just wanted to see if anybody that's um, virtually uh, connected uh, has any questions. And if you don't, just feel free to, to leave if you have to go, or we can stay a few minutes more for any additional comments or questions. Are you going to have a part three? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so, so on, huh? yeah. So on June 21st, which is a Tuesday at 6 30. I'm going to be having a third class about how you can apply astrology to tarot. And so I'll show how tarot cards are associated with different astrology signs. And then I'll probably do like a little example of like a tarot card spread so you can like see how you like read and interpret the cards like in the moment. So if you were interested in that, if you went to my intro to tarot class, I really recommend going to that class as well. You had that class. Will you repeat it for us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was recorded. Oh, good. I'll, yeah. look it up. I'll look it up. And I was over at Bookends and Beginnings, and I, I went in to look for a completely different kind of book, but there was a whole display case full of tarot books mm -hmm. and tarot decks. And just, I was like, oh, interesting. I'm going to have to. Learn tarot. Yeah, my number one tip in like learning tarot and astrology, just you have to like, I read a lot. You can read online sources. You can listen to podcasts. You can like read physical books. You can talk to other people who are interested in astrology, but you just have to be really open to like learning and then really it's trial and error. Once you kind of see those connections reflected in your own personal life or in the people around you, it'll like blow your mind. You'll be like, I can't believe I didn't know this before. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, if anybody's interested, just uh, we're here at the Robert Crown Branch and um, thank you very much, Brooke. Um, I'll send out the, uh, so the resources and the uh, YouTube uh, um, presentation as soon as we have it. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Your name was Shava. Shava. What was your name oh. again? I'm sorry. My name is Brooke. Brooke. Brooke, of course. Anyway, I, I was just going to show you this lady. Oh, is your class over? Are you through here? Yeah. I'm just the end of recording.